Hey guys, Allegorix here with a brand new video series for Escape from Tarkov Arena. This is the Road to X series, where X is each of the end level classes for each of the kits. I will take you through my journey through each of these classes, and I will discuss with you how it felt to play them, go over their kits a little bit, and show you a little bit of gameplay. It is a complete and total grind to get to these end tier kits. A lot of experience is required, a lot of hours played, so make sure you check out each of the classes and make sure that it is the tree for you before you jump in. Today we are on the road to Haymaker, where you are going to see me travel from the dust coverless AK of the attic all the way to the swagged out holographic site, infrared laser. 100 round drum mag, golden TT, slick wearing haymaker. I hope this is helpful to some new players out there, some players who want to make a switch to a new kit and aren't sure which ones to choose. KDB damned, I will keep playing lower tier kits and build them up. I want to see what each one does. I want to share it with you. I'm just having fun. I hope you guys are too. So please consider leaving a like and following the channel if you enjoy the video. It's the best way to leave me feedback. I want to jump straight into this video, so let's check it out. All right, so starting here with Attic. Attic is free to unlock and requires no experience. He is a starter class. The cost to play him is 49,500 rubles per round. We jump into the tree with a dirty, broken down looking pile of gun. No way this is any good, right? Well, maybe... maybe not. If we consider other classes of similar meta point level, Attic is actually pretty solid as a whole and can be a real performer. The AK-545 limits you to semi-auto fire only, meaning you have to wait until the next kit to hold down that trigger and launch your opponent's shins into orbit. Coupled with the recent recoil update to Tarkov, a few quick, well-placed rounds can cut down your enemies, your mileage may vary, however, with this kit, as it is a bit aim and positioning dependent. I do recommend you stick to cover and line up to the side of common enemy pathways to take them by surprise and lock down your headshots. I will admit from time to time I did find myself picking up a couple of weapons a teammate may have dropped me so that I could venture into that fully automatic field and give the enemy what fur. You are decently tanky for a tier 1 kit with a Zuck 3 press vest for level 3 armor and a level 2 helmet and face shield from the fireman helmet. However, I do recommend removing it entirely at the start of each round, as it limits your visibility and your ability to hear a freight train coming up 20 feet behind you. Also, at the start of the round, make sure you are seductively applying that Vaseline to your lips, so they don't get chapped from the cold hard reality that you will be outclassed by all of the fully automatic weapons you will be facing in the field. Do you hear that? Ah, the sweet sound of fully automatic fire being slung relentlessly downrange at your opponents. And what better thing to sling that fire from than the beautiful, full-bodied, thick build of the PPSH-41. I mean, just look at those curves. That voluptuously plump 71 round steel magazine in that barrel. <clears throat> <clears throat> anyway, after you have done your due diligence as Attic, you now find yourself with Papa Shaw, the dick-helmed menace that never has to stop firing his weapon. He wants your legs and he will take them. Papa Shaw is 22,000 experience to unlock and costs 62,300 rubles per match. Whatever time you spent on Attic was worth it to sprint around with this guy. He is pretty solid all around and a hell of a lot of fun to play. Those well-placed shots I mentioned before? Don't worry about it. Just simply right-click on their legs or upper chest, followed by an extended left-click, and their blood is as good as yours. You get three 71-round mags of ammo in your PPSH, a level 3 steel helmet, and a downgraded level 2 6B2 armor vest. What you sacrifice in armor, you gain in killing power and maneuverability. You are also equipped with a 7.62x25 paperweight in your side holster and a decent med set to deal with bleeds, but will be lacking in the amount of HP that you can restore. I hope that you enjoyed this kit as much as I did. It is very unique in the class tree and a well-rounded low-tier run-and-gun kit. Finally, don't forget about your MPL-50 entrenching tool that you can use to dig the graves of your enemies before putting them down to rest. Oh, oh. Oh, <laughs> oh, 
Next up, we have Tactical, the man that will take your opponents back to school. <laughs> uh, sadly, we have finished up with Daddy Shaw. Uh, I, I mean, pa Papa Shaw. And now we have Tactical, the awkward middle child between fun and gun in the sun that was the PPSH and the beefcake bromine who brings his rifle rounds to the table. Tactical is a modernized and upgraded version of Papa Shaw, but devoid of all 1941 kill machines and the smell of melting metal and burning wood. Although we do keep some of the curves. He requires 55,400 experience to unlock from the previous kit and costs 102,800 rubles per match to play. We trade our level 3 dick helm in for the class 4 SOCOM striker helmet and beef up with our level 4 M mech armored rig, offering protection to our thorax. You will also notice that for the first time, and basically the last time, we know what it's like to hear with our gift from the heavens in the form of a sword and headset. Do not get used to this, however, as you will not see any headphones again until we reach Haymaker at the end of this road. Tactical is equipped with the MP5 SD, which shoots 9x19 Luger CCI rounds out of three 50 round magazines. We are also granted our first optic in the tree mounted on the MP5. We have a solid sidearm in the Beretta M9A3 9mm pistol shooting AP 6.3s, which actually do come in handy if you need to whip it out to finish a fight. As far as healing, we get slapped in the face and told to die because we are only given the ability to stop one heavy bleed. And we have an 80 second painkiller. We finally receive a real healing item in the form of an IFAC, but it must be a hand me down from Big Brother Bromine or something because it's only half full. So don't get shot. All in all, Tactical is a solid kit as you move into the mid tier, but lacks anything special to make it stand out to me. You also may struggle with healing at times, depending on the situation. Coming in as the fourth kid on the road to Haymaker, we have Big Brother Bromine. This beefcake is bubbling to the brim with all kinds of new toys. Bromine requires 161,100 experience to unlock and costs 139,800 rubles to play each match. His kit brings us into the rifle calibers. Unfortunately, we only have M856 rounds that will struggle to get through mid-tier armors. However, what Bromine lacks in penetration, he more than makes up for in size. He is rocking the girthy G36 with 360 round mags, supported by a foregrip and fantastic hollow sight as the cherry on top of this delicious pie. Roaming sports the USP45 as his backup, shooting 45 ACP AP rounds, which have a much higher penetration than his main weapon. This big boy comes stacked with a level 5 baggerly armored rig and a ZSH helmet with face guard, offering level 4 protection to the top nape and ears and level 3 to the eyes and jaw to protect that beautifully sculpted jawline. For meds, we hop back down to the AI2 cheese for only 100 healing. However, we are much tankier, so hopefully we will not need it as much. We make up for it by having a Zagustin to stop and prevent bleeds, as well as a Vaseline. These are two very strong meds to pop at the beginning of each round. Get used to Big Brother Bromine and his strong jawline because you need a good chunk of XP for the next kit. Hey, hey buddy. To wrap it all up, Bromine is actually a refreshing change of pace. You start to experience that tankier side of the CQB class trees and get to see new ammo types and meds. On the downside, you will start to struggle eventually against some kits with similar armors due to your lack of penetrative power. I really enjoyed Bromine a lot as he complements the previous kits. He serves as a foundation in tandem with those to build the last couple of tiers in this tree, which we will review shortly. The Cavalier is here. Prepare to have your socks blown clean off and your hair blown back with this guy. Cavalier takes it up a notch from Big Brother Bromine, then he takes it up two more. Cavalier requires 281,000 experience to unlock and costs 196,100 rubles to play each match. Cavalier gives off junkyard psychopath energy and I am not sure why. This man will sprint around head eyesing everyone in sight, then torture the last guy with a car battery while crying tears of joy behind his gas welders. <laughs> Cavalier is quick and light, sports solid armor, and we finally know what it feels like to penetrate someone uh, with our ammo. <clears throat> we have the MPX with 9x19 PBP ammo and 350 round magazines. 
We essentially have no sidearm as the CR200 revolver is about as reliable as an unreliable sidearm. If the gun was not enough of an upgrade, we are now rocking a level 6 armored rig and a level 4 helmet with level 3 jaw and ear protection. For meds, we lose our Zagustin, unfortunately, but we do keep the Vaseline and trade in our cheese for a full IFAC. On top of that, we get two aluminum splints and a full Kalak B. Very solid. I am not kidding, guys. This kit is monstrous. You can absolutely run this kit as a cheaper alternative to the more expensive kits we are about to cover if you needed to watch your money but still want to dominate the battlefield. The MPX is a laser beam and can even compete decently at range. I don't have much else to say, but this kit was super fun, in my opinion overshadowed only by one other kit in this tree. In wrapping up Cavalier, this brings us to Nightmare. You thought the way I talked about Cavalier that it would be the best, right? No, no, sir. Nightmare is insane. Real quick, I want you to take Cavalier, right? Now clone him and convince the clones to make love so they can produce this absolute menace of the arena. Hello there. Nightmare comes at a hefty cost, however, as it takes a whopping 392,000 more experience to unlock, and costs 259,000 rubles to play each match. I really hope you win with this kit, because this is a one-way ticket to destitution if you can't. We pivot from the MPX over to the MCX, 300 blackout, 762 by 35 Instead of 350 round magazines, we have four 40 round magazines, shooting 300 blackout AP, which shreds most people. We also get two 60 round magazines of 300 blackout CBJ rounds, which give you options if you want to mess around. Honestly, I never bothered with this. In fact, my recommendation is to fully drop your backpack at the start of each round to shed a little weight and gain maneuverability. We are quite heavy but incredibly durable with our level 5 redut armor with full thorax side and stomach coverage, as well as the TC-800 helmet at level 4 head with level 3 eye and jaw face protection. For meds, we get an adrenaline for pain, not that you will ever feel it. A full AFAC, three Kalak Bs, and three aluminum splints. We get back our sidearm in the form of the P226 9x19 pistol shooting PBP rounds. Honestly, just full send it with this man. He is an absolute blast to play and is incredibly powerful. The Cavalier and Nightmare arc of my journey were the best part and well worth the grind through the previous kits. Nightmare's gun is every bit of a laser beam as the previous weapon we were running with Cavalier. You get a beautiful optic on top, and if you want to run around like a meme lord, you can equip the Game Boy in your canted sight and go to town shooting those little yellow and red pixels that might pop up on your screen, although you are more likely to perish than anything else. Like I said before, this kit was an absolute blast. I highly recommend this kit. Nightmare is super fun to play. You can run and gun. You're super tanky. Very solid class. Borderline broken in my opinion. Go out there and have fun and go haunt someone's dreams. And here we are, the Mac Daddy, the end of the road, the golden TT wielding 100 round mag puke camo to Giga Chad. We have reached the top, the pinnacle, right? Well, I don't know exactly. So Haymaker requires another 404,000 experience to unlock after Nightmare and costs 269,800 rubles to play per match. So, why am I so hesitant towards Haymaker? Well, he costs a little more than Nightmare to run, so let's see what he has. We get a loaded up G36 shooting great ammo at 855A1, making Brother Bromine jealous of our supreme penetration. Haymaker has two 100 round magazines of this, which honestly is pretty nuts. We also get a level 5 top of head protection via a slat plate on our fast helm with the level 4 on the nape. We lose our face shield though. We also go up one armor tier to level 6 with a slick, but we lose out on our stomach and groin protection that we had with the redut on Nightmare. For a sidearm, we are back to our roots with the 7.62x25 paperweight, but this time it's shiny. We have a similar med suite as the Nightmare, which should get you through most healing situations. So what do I think of this? I think Haymaker is not fully intended to be the ultimate top class in this tree. 
I think Haymaker serves as an alternative to Nightmare. You get a bigger rifle, but it is less of a laser beam, and you lose armor coverage and trade it for a little bit more maneuverability. All in all, I actually had a lot of fun running around with Haymaker. Not having to worry about reloading and being able to quickly take multiple gunfights is very powerful. But I feel like Nightmare takes the edge here as the maneuverability is not that much different, especially when you ditch the extra mags and backpack at the start of the round. It comes as a slightly cheaper price tag and protects you against more RANs, or random acts of nonsense, from lower tier ammo in the form of a face shield. The ammo is also better and kills more quickly in my opinion on Nightmare, which are also delivered at a higher rate of fire. To sum it all up, Haymaker was fun, but Nightmare outclasses it in my opinion at a slightly cheaper price point, but I could see Haymaker being preferred over Nightmare for certain playstyles. At the end of the day, this tree is very strong, you can't go wrong once you get into the Cavalier, Nightmare, and Haymaker tiers. At that point it becomes personal preference and you can have a lot of fun playing any of the classes. So now that we're at the end of the road, I wanted to do a quick summary of a few numbers here just to put this tree into perspective for you guys. The total XP needed to unlock each of these classes is 1,315,000 experience. It looks like most people are averaging around 5,800 XP per game. Doing the quick math, that comes out to approximately 227 games. Let's assume each game, including loading times, is about 20 minutes. That brings total playtime to unlock the Haymaker class to approximately 76 hours, which really is a lot of time. And I have done this now for multiple trees, which you will see in upcoming videos. Obviously, these videos do take a long time to record and edit, so if you enjoyed it, please consider liking the video and possibly subscribing to the channel if you would like to see more content like this. I want to hear from you too. If you have any feedback, questions, or want to add anything I may have missed, please do so in the comment section. I try my best to answer every comment on my videos. That is all I have for you guys today. I really hope this video was useful and helped somebody out. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.